Okay, so here's a video trying to give you seven practical tips on how to make the most of your synoptic essay in paper three. Trying to make the most of the knowledge that you have and also how you apply that knowledge to this synoptic essay title. Synoptic essay is 25 out of 78 marks in your third paper, but notice 60% of those are AO1, and AO1 is recall and showing understanding, whereas only 40%, only I say, 40% uh, of the marks are AO2 marks. That's application of your knowledge. So it's worth you understanding where these come into the essay title. So, Choosing the content of your essay is the A01 marks. So choosing the topics that you're going to write about. So for this essay title, you could be talking about things like proteins, haemoglobins, antibodies, um, hormones, ATP, DNA. All of those would be substances that contain nitrogen. Whereas the AO2 marks are how you address the theme of the essay. And it's worth you understanding where those marks are and how you can get them. In terms of the length of time that you should take on the essay, I would recommend an absolute maximum of 40 minutes, and that includes planning, which is absolutely essential. And the reason that I say 40 minutes is that if you work out the proportion of 25 out of 78 marks, it ends up being about 38 minutes. But I think you need to recognise that most of the AO1 marks on paper three are in the synoptic essay. That means all of the questions beforehand, most of those are gonna be the AO2 and AO3 marks. And almost inevitably, you're going to need more time to be reading those questions, taking in the information, and thinking about what you want to write in your answer than possibly you're going to actually want to use for this essay. So, tips for your synoptic essay. Tip number one is plan. And planning on two levels, because I would say to you, the first thing that you should do when you open your paper three is to go straight to the back and look at the synoptic essay titles and to do an instant plan right at the beginning of the exam, probably only two or three minutes. And that is so that you consider both of the essay titles, which is really quite important. Because for each of those essay titles, you need to consider how much content you know to get the maximum of 15 marks, but also really importantly, how well do you think you can apply that knowledge, you can pick out in this case the importance of each of those topics and how you can apply that in the essay. And you need to be thinking how you can do these both to A-level standard. I'm gonna be reiterating that throughout these tips. This essay title came from 2017. The other essay title was the importance of diffusion to living organisms. The majority of students chose the other essay title, but this essay title got the higher mean mark. And I suspect that that's because students, as soon as they looked at the essay titles, they thought, oh, I know about diffusion. I know what I can write about that, but maybe didn't think carefully enough how they would address the importance of each of the examples of diffusion that they used. Whereas the students doing this title may be found talking about the importance more easy and therefore got the higher marks. So first tip, instant plan at the beginning of paper three.
Then when you get to the essay question in paper three, you spend a couple more minutes brain dumping terminology for the title that you have chosen to do. Because terminology is going to be key. Because everything about this essay is getting down A-level knowledge. The next tip that I'm going to talk about is the content. What are you actually going to write? What examples or topics are you going to include in your content? And the key thing here is that you have to allow enough time to write about at least four topics. Personally, I recommend you doing five, and I think that's probably a reasonable balance between the time that you've got and actually having a little bit of insurance because the examiners will pick the best four topics for your mark. The really key thing here is that these four topics need to come from different parts of the syllabus. Don't just talk about lots of different examples from one topic. This is called a synoptic essay for a reason, and that's so that you are showing the breadth of knowledge that you've learnt across your two years of A-level study. It's worth noting here that if your timing goes awry and you only manage to talk about one or two topics, however fantastically and however well applied to the theme of the question, you're going to get a maximum of 10 marks. So actually really important to try and get down at least four topics covered, four examples of content covered. Another thing that you should be aware of is that for the synoptic essay, no introduction and no conclusion is needed. You can dive straight into that first paragraph about your first example of the content. And the paragraphs don't actually need to be linked to each other. You are not trying to produce a beautiful essay of prose. You're basically trying to get down at least four paragraphs of good A-level content and that content applied to the theme of the essay. So tip number three is about how you can format your essay to make sure that you address both of these aspects of the essay. And my advice to you here is to write a paragraph on each example that you want to use as a nitrogen containing substance. And once you have finished describing the content describing haemoglobin, how it works, um, describing antibodies, how they work, describing ATP and DNA and how they work perhaps, obviously pointing out where the nitrogen containing parts of those molecules are. Once you've done that, the last few sentences of each of your paragraphs should be about addressing the importance of that example to other biological processes. So that would be my recommendation to you. Tip number four is about how you get these AO2 marks and how you address the theme of the essay. As a sideline, it's worth you realising that actually since the new syllabus came out, all of the essay titles have been about the importance of something, so worth knowing that. 
How do you address the theme? If you're talking about the importance of something, then think about what would occur or what wouldn't occur to other processes if this piece of content, this example, didn't exist. But crucially, you need to explain this in A-level detail. So if you were talking about haemoglobin, for example, and you had spent the previous few sentences talking about how haemoglobin worked, so what you need to think about is if haemoglobin wasn't there, and we're trying to do that to A-level standard of detail. So here I'm thinking terminology. I'm thinking you would no longer have oxyhemoglobin. Oxygen would no longer be transported as a result of mass transport of the blood to the muscles and it wouldn't be able to be involved in aerobic respiration. Oxygen could not be the final electron acceptor, and therefore ATP couldn't be used in things like muscle contraction, active transport. So I'm trying to include as much A-level terminology in addressing the theme as I am in addressing the content. Really important. The other thing that examiners say is that if you just say, oh, if haemoglobin wasn't there, the organism would die, they simply consider that to be too superficial. What you should be thinking about is rather than just thinking about, oh, the organism is going to die, think about its effect on other processes because that is going to lead you to be thinking about a-level terminology, and that is key to success in the essay, which leads me on very nicely to tip number five, which is to make every sentence contain either new A-level detail or another piece of A-level terminology. Nearly every sentence should do that. If you are writing more than two sentences in a row where you are not using A-level terminology or things that you have learned in the last two years, you're probably starting to sink below A-level standard of knowledge. You don't want to be talking about GCSE standard. You don't want to be talking in generalizations. Think about including the stuff that you have learned in the last two years. Okay, coming to the last of our points now, and in my view, these five are absolutely key. But it is also worth you recognising that you will be penalised in your essay if you write about either a significant error or if you write about something that is irrelevant to the essay title. And an example of this is if you were talking about something in the content like a carbohydrate molecule or a lipid molecule that clearly doesn't contain nitrogen because those molecules only contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. It's worth you recognising that a significant error or an irrelevant topic has to last, in the examiner's view, at least several lines. It's not about you getting one thing wrong. OK, so just be aware that it's about you talking at length about something that is either wrong or irrelevant.
If you write about one significant error or one piece of irrelevant topic, and remember it has to be several lines, you would have a maximum of 20 marks. So it one won't penalize you too much. If you include two significant errors or more, then your maximum mark will be capped at 15. My final tip is going to be for those students who are absolutely aiming for A-star quality essays. You're going for the top marks, the 24, 25 out of 25. And this is where you have to include something that is extra to the specification. And I just want to give you a little tip that might help you get there. Because in your textbook, you have sections marked with a purple plus sign, which means extra to the specification. And it might be worth you reading a few of those and thinking about how those extra bits to the specification could be applied to a number of different essays. So an example of one of the plus topics in your textbook is one about indoleacetic acid. And the story of how that was discovered as to how it works and how it moves within the plant stem tip could be useful in any essay that is about proteins, hormones, Funnily enough, nitrogen containing substances, responses, diffusion, that topic you could write about for a paragraph. You could describe its importance, explain its importance, and that would be a topic that is deemed extra to the specification. Because again, just like significant errors and irrelevant content need to be several lines for them to be deemed big enough to impose the restriction on marks, this also has to be several lines of content for you to push you up into these top marks for the essay. Be aware, though, that everything else has to be in place for you to get 24, 25 marks because you've included an extracurricular topic. You've got to have written at least three or four other topics. Everything has got to be related to the theme of the question. It all has to be to a level standard of detail and terminology. But that is, I think, a relatively accessible way for top marks to be gained because you have some of that information in the textbook that I'm sure is available to you. I hope those tips um, are useful and I hope that enables you to get your head around what you need to do in order to do well in the synoptic essay. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to subscribe. Do share it with friends if you found it useful and I'd be really happy to see any comments you have about the video.